<laughs> like, because I'm just all body. I'm, I'm a gorilla. Hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast. Oh, man, this is this is going to be a fun one, after, especially after the last one. So depressing. I mean, it, it's good. It, in some sense, it's a good exercise to, to meditate on these kinds of issues because it's 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 hard to tell somebody to check your privilege right it's more it's better to actually think about how this relates to yourself and like for me not thinking about things. we're not doing the pl- the class podcast over again we're, we're instead gonna do an icebreaker because yeah we're still seeped in steeped in the class podcast and it is it is a thing well but in in addition to our in addition to our um icebreaker you can tell it's late at night when we're filming this but say we're just gonna have a fun chat about those um youtube channels and and content creators that we watch and we love and yes inspire us i mean we talked about inspiration what, like a month ago or month two ago-ish. months ago and and uh but we didn't really talk about specific content creators so yeah. it'd be really nice just to pay homage and link to a few of our favorites down below um, or a lot of our favorites. Or a lot of our favorites, because I mean, when we started writing these things out, we definitely it, it, it watch. Got, we learned some things. We learned that Ryan watches YouTube like a forty-year-old man, <laughs> and I watch YouTube like a fifteen-year-old girl. Yeah, but I, I think that'll come out. We'll explain that a little bit more later. How about we do the the actual icebreaker? Yeah. All right. So, what is the video on YouTube or wherever else that you have watched the most? Not the music that you've listened to, but the yeah. video you've watched the most. The video, without a doubt, that I've watched the most is probably Red Letter Media's Mr. Plinkett's critique of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, and we'll throw a link down there. All of these things will have links in the show notes. Yeah, we're gonna. And this is gonna be crazy to create show notes for. Whatever. Yeah, but it's we're gonna it. do it. So I I stumbled across it. I was, I was at a friend's house, sitting on the recliner on my laptop, browsing through YouTube and. I'm not sure what I was looking at before that, but somehow in the sidebar I noticed uh, some stills from Star Wars, and it was like nine different parts or something like that crazy, because he broke it up into ten-minute sections. Yeah. It's about as long as the video, it seems, itself, the movie. Um, and so I started watching it, and it's this weird... Like, if you don't get the humor... I mean, there's a lot of um, throwaway sexist lines, racism stuff, because the character he's playing is this old crotchety homicidal man who sits there and watches videos so if you can get past Come watch star wars with me it's the star wars oh, episode star wars. one there's things the worst thing since my son it, and really? i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna give all no. the jokes because we want to no. keep it fairly clean yes but uh if you can get past the voice mm-hmm. if you can get past some of the humor the dark twisted humor it's you can watch that and it is basically i think filmmaking 101 yes. he covers almost everything that has to do with what goes into making a Plot good holes, film effects yeah just uh, everything from script filming editing everything like he, not spending 20 minutes talking about trade negotiations yeah and, and and the funny thing is a lot of people who harp on star wars star wars will harp on it because of problems in how you treat the universe or the respect that you give to either the characters or whatever so you think the sith are really stupid but he takes it from a filmmaker's point of view in terms of why certain things don't make sense. So, for example, trade negotiations. You know, why are these Jedi from a from a, just a plot point of view? Why are these Jedi in this position? And then, therefore, that leads into like, why did you set up these shots in this way? I mean, it's just it's incredible. If you have over an hour to kill, <laughs> I would highly recommend it. And that is definitely I've watched that, and he's done he's done all of the Star Wars prequels. He's done the two new Star Trek reboots, the J.J. Abrams ones. He's done all of the Next Generation movies. Oh, wow. I haven't seen those. Oh, the Next Generation is good. He, he's like, he hates the, what they did to the Next Generation movies. He's like, there's two Picards. There's the action schlock Picard of the movies, and then there's the thoughtful, philosophic diplomat of the TV series. And he's like, because everything needs to be explosions and hypercharged and stuff, you have, you know, a 60-year-old man swinging fr- across, you know, a thing to get away from the board kind of deal. He's like... Sorry, I couldn't hear you over the fact that Picard is a badass. I know, but he, he's like, the Picard of the TV series is so much better because he's not a, he's not a hot shot action. Uh, he gives an example of... Uh, wanting to kill the Borg in the movies, but wanting to rescue the Borg in the TV series yeah. and re- respecting that they're uh, a life form. 
Anyway, so he's done all of the next gen movies. And then he's done a few other ones like Avatar, uh, Titanic, uh, Baby's Day Out, <laughs> Cop Dog. I don't know. Anyway, so we'll link we'll link it to the Red Letter Media um, site, the Harry Plinkett, Harry S. Plinkett, which is the character's name. Uh, his his reviews of the Star Wars movies and whatnot, but that is without a doubt. I've watched that so many times because after you watch it once, you just throw it in the background and listen to it. And it's amazing. So mine uh, mine is considerably shorter than the video <laughs> I have watched most on account of you just covered like nine series of videos and it's totally not fair. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, no, a friend of mine, Dan, um, got me into say Frank years and years and years ago. And one day, I was slacking off from writing my thesis, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to watch YouTube for a while, and oh, Dave Frank's got a new show, and he showed his first episode in a show, as opposed to the show, which is the original Dave Frank show, um, was the Invocation for Beginnings, which talked about my cheese monster, and introduced me to the phrase F-I-L-D-I, which is probably my second favorite initialism. Possibly my first. My, I mean, in competition with... DFTBA, which is Don't Forget to Be Awesome, F-I-L-D-I is Fuck It, Let's Do It. And it helps me get things done when I need to. And so I, instead of watching YouTube for two or three hours, I closed YouTube after the video and I went, alright, thanks for that, Zay Frank. Time to go work on my thesis. And every once in a while, when I need to address my cheese monster, I will open it back up. And I'll watch it for like five minutes. And then I will move on. And if you don't understand the cheese monster, you have to watch the video. You just watch the video. And everything will be fine. Yeah. It's uh, where I rambled on about nine movies or nine films. Yours is definitely more impactful. It, it's a, It's got a really good call to action. Yeah. So, Say Frank's really good at that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and he, he hits me in a, in, a really, in, a, in a really cool spot. But, yeah. I mean, those are the things we've watched the most... Like I said, Ryan watches YouTube like a 40-year-old man. Can you explain that, Ryan? I find what I tend to gravitate towards now, or when I refine... Because I, I watch a lot of networks, so uh, if it's not on YouTube, uh, then it's things like uh, a lot of blip networks. So that guy with the glasses.com, Shay or Shez Apocalypse, um, which was an offshoot of that one. Um, and The Escapist, right? Yeah. So th those aren't specifically YouTube, but we'll also talk a lot about stuff on YouTube. Um, I tend to, once I get over the initial, oh, this network is awesome, gravitate towards shows and content that is either informative slash lectury, uh, lecture in the university sense of delivering content in a one, one direction. It's not a conversation. It's uh, somebody speaking and delivering the content to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so and if it's not a lecture, then it's somebody who's presenting either an opinion or an argument for something. So I watch a lot of um, media criticism. So I don't watch a lot of movies at the theater anymore, but I find out about a lot of things that have been released through certain content creators, either on Blip or YouTube or whatever, um, who review the movies, but don't review it in the sense of just here are the plot points of here's how this video fits in with a general cultural zeitgeist or this is how this video handles these topics or whatever so those tend to be if it's not in, informal or informal informative or if it's not argumentative or opinionated i'll still watch other things more whimsical more fun content but usually i gravitate towards these informative educative uh, pieces I am totally opposite. I subscribe to some of those channels um, on YouTube, uh, but I don't watch them very much. Um, at least not as much as I'd like. No, I, I watch I watch a lot of music. I watch a lot of people play video games. I watch uh, a lot of vlogs and a lot of web series. Um, yeah, I mean that's and and I watch a lot of uh, like YouTube sketch comedy. And I'm very I'm weirdly particular when it comes to my sketch comedy. Because I, I was just, I was wandering around, uh, maybe last weekend, I was wandering around the College Humor site, mm -hmm. uh, or the, ra rather their channel, and I have almost no interest in the College Humor sort of um, produced videos. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, some of them are hilarious. Most of them are hilarious, but they aren't, they aren't what I gravitate towards. What I gravitate towards are their Hardly Working series, mm -hmm. which is all about the content creators at College Humor doing funny things and it's sketch comedy involving them it's in, because I love things involving real people 
um, even if those real people are playing sort of themselves as characters. So, I mean, I watch, and I watch a ton of web series. And is this, I guess we, we, can, we, can, we can, we should go back and forth, I think. Okay. That way, that way I'm not inundating them with links, even though I'm totally going to inundate them with links if you check the show notes. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I watch Red vs. Blue. I watch um, all the series that you can get on Geek and Sundry. Uh, a bunch of stuff on the Nerdist Network. Uh, I love their celebrity bowling thing. I seriously, it's just like Chris Hardwick kicks people's asses at bowling. It's hilarious, except for Walter White. Walter White wrecks him. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Um, YouTube series like uh, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and Emma Approved. Uh, Ruby, the second season of which is coming out very soon. It's the Rooster Teeth original animated series. And it is, the art design is amazing, the, the, like, just the music is amazing, the, the world building is awesome, and I watch a ton of web series around that stuff, Video Game High School, Freddie Wong series, I absolutely love it. And it is, it's all stuff aimed at, at kids who are, or people, rather, who are sort of in their late teens, early 20s, uh, because on YouTube, and, and, and my advertising actually proves this, mm -hmm. YouTube thinks I'm a 15-year-old girl. <laughs> you would not believe the amount of Dove commercials I see. You would not. It was... You know what? Now that you mention that, it is strange. Um, so on my laptop, I will admit to using an ad blocker. Shame on me. Um, I'm getting to the point now where I'm, I'm ready to turn it off uh, on the things that I want to support. Um, but I noticed on my uh, my tablet, I don't have an ad blocker on it. And during the election, before every YouTube video I watched was an NDP paid ad. Oh my God. It was strange. Like I I don't even know how uh, they uh. how they like what what the analytics uh, said about it and how that how it drew that conclusion. But I just found it extremely interesting, and it could just be. It could be something as simple as my geographic location because my riding is a heavy NDP um, area, right? So, I mean, like our... even The, the NDP is the New Democratic Party. Sorry, yes. The Participating New Democratic... in our recent Ontario elections. Yeah, look, uh, go back to our previous video for more information about that. But, uh, like, our, our local paper supported the NDPs and whatnot. But anyways, uh, I noticed, the, and the only reason why this became apparent is there was a guy who passed out on my futon and I wanted to wake him up with some heavy metal music. And so I went to YouTube, went to play it, and uh, turned up full blast, and a freaking NDP ad started playing, ruining it altogether. <laughs> so and that's like, man, Jesus, what do, what do I watch? And it must be the things. Because, I mean, when I watch, like listening to some of the things you watch on, on YouTube, um, I do watch some, as I said, more of the, some whimsical things. Like, I do watch um, stick, or, sorry, dick figures uh, on the Mondo Network. Um, I do like how it should have ended. Uh, I do watch a lot of, um, um, cinema sins. Yeah. Cinema sins. Thank you. you. That's exactly what I was thinking of. I, so I watch, I watch some of the ones that are, uh, but again, cinema sins is more co commentary. On the, it's, yeah. On it's the commentary. Videos. It's critical. Um, but I also watch other guys like emergency. Awesome. Uh, Charlie, he does, uh, he reviews I only discovered him because he was reviewing Doctor Who during the 50th anniversary run. Oh, yeah. But Charlie does reviews on Doctor Who, on um, um, Walking Dead, on Game of Thrones. He just does all sorts of stuff. And so I'm looking forward to when um, the next series of Doctor Who airs because he's going to do a lot more stuff that way. And I like, I like what he talk discusses and when he talk talks about the fan theories and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like I, as much as I watch those... On YouTube, I love the PBS Idea Channel and the PBS Game Show, which take like creates a thesis of discussing the human condition in terms of IKEA products, or is Doctor Who a religion? Uh, those are two from the PBS, I, uh, PBS Idea. Just to be clear, Idea Doctor Channel. Who is not a religion, right? N well, watch the video. I mean, we'll link it down below. Uh, it's he makes an interesting case in terms of what the preconditions are for a religion and what it says you know like the doctor being a being of capital g good who has a vested interest in our in our culture you know 
it's 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 interesting. You should after we're done this, you should watch it. I will. I will. It's a, it's a fantastic show. I, I do I do have some sleeping dogs to play, but I can do both. <laughs> uh, so and then the game show, same deal. He discusses various elements of gaming, and not just the games themselves, but also the the um, system. Uh, or the the community of gaming, what do what do trolls say about gaming and whatnot? So, um, so I like those kinds of videos, um, and I tend to my relaxing videos are the cultural commentary or the the pop culture commentators. So, the that guy with the glasses site has a lot of them. Um, and I when I first went there, link it was Linkara's History of Power Rangers, what brought me to that site, and I started to play around in the different areas, and so you had the Nostalgia Critic, and Leon Thomas's Renegade Cut, I really enjoy. Uh, but I discovered that, as much as I enjoyed the comedy stuff, or the funny reviews of movies, the, the nostalgic videos, mm -hmm. I started to shift my attention towards those content creators who were probably still in grad school like I was, who had English degrees, film studies degrees, and they ended up creating a separate website called, is it Shez or Shea? Shea. Shea. So Shea Apocalypse. I think it's SheaApocalypse.com. And there's a bunch of content creators over there that I, it's, you watch them and you learn something about film theory. So uh, Kyle, the Owen, Owen Citizen, Owen Citizen, does a lot of things on his Browse Held High um, series. Uh, Sermsum Ursa, she just says call me Ursa. She has she has a program called Stuff You Like. Uh, she talks about um, f the fan community, especially mm. like shipping of characters and whatnot. She's discussed that kind of thing. She just recently did an interesting series on Pride and Prejudice, which is why I know what the Lizzie Bennet Diaries are all about. The Lizzie Bennet um, Diaries are so good. Yeah, yeah, I need to check it out. But based on what she showed, it was amazing. Um, Dan Olson, uh, who does Folding Ideas, I think he's Canadian. He does a, it's a puppet show uh, with a foldy, but he does a lot of uh, commentary on, he did things like what does masculinity mean in 300, what does Homer Simpson say about, you know, like modern society. I want to society. do a puppet podcast. It, it, we should, I it should wouldn't really these. make a difference if you're listening, I'll be honest. It would be pretty much the same thing, um, but my, my puppet is probably more handsome. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's another guy in there, Phil, who does the bunny perspective. Although he, I don't know if he creates many of those videos anymore. But his, if you look at his stuff on on Blip in the archives, he does. It's a pot smoking bunny who he talks a lot about how much Glee has started to suck. But he like there's a <laughs> sense of him that he's a disenfranchised friend that he liked Glee, but he hated what it became. Um, but he liked a lot of that stuff. So the bunny perspective, Rantasmo, he does a show called Needs More Gay. And he just discusses different elements of the LGBT community or queer community in various pop cultural things. Yeah. Um, and then also Todd from Todd in the Shadows, he, d he reviews pop culture, or sorry, pop hits on the charts. So he's a music guy. Um, and they that's all of their shows, they have varying degrees of academic engagement with the material. Uh, there, it's quite a wide spectrum, but it's all stuff that when you watch it tends to pull in theory as a as a way of starting with wrestling with the concepts and then exploring the concepts on their own merit um and i that's what i tend to, to ryan has infected me a little bit i did on his recommendation watch linkara in the entire thing of linkara's history of the power rangers on my last long weekend <laughs> And it was really good. It is an amazing series. Linkara, he, he definitely reinvigorated my I know, fire from the Power Rangers. I know more about Power Rangers <laughs> now than I ever have. And I do. I love mm. them more now than ever I ever have, except for that one time when I was 10 and I discovered Power Rangers. <laughs> but, yeah, I tend to watch... I mean, in addition to web series, um, I do watch a lot of Let's Plays. I watch NerdCubed. I... Um, Loading Ready Live, which is the Loading Ready Run live stream. Uh, Loading Ready Run is is easily the coolest and best comedy group I have found online. Um, I say coolest because a they're really cool. B they were super helpful in sending, helping us set up headshots in year one. Mm -hmm. um, we skyped with a couple of them and they helped us answer questions that we didn't know we had yet. And you know they were they were really nice about it. They run Desert Bus for Hope, which is amazing. 
Um, but they also, yeah, they started they started doing a lot of live streaming, and they're playing all kinds of stuff. Right now, I think they've all but slowly caught the Dark Souls bug, which is hilarious, watching them all just tilt out to play <laughs> Dark Souls. To be fair, I haven't played it yet, and I'm, I'm intending to, and I'm going to just tilt out playing it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like Achievement Hunter and Nerd Cubed and, and people like that. I don't know why I find the Achievement Hunter guys so funny, but I do... Um, I listen to a lot of music on YouTube. Megan Tanyes, um, uh, Lindsey Stomp, was it like Lindsey Sterling, uh, George Watsky, Nice Peter. Um, you might have seen him in various epic rap battles of history on account of one of he, he is one of the founders. He also has a vlog and writes music, and he has a lot of friends, and they are all awesome. Mm -hmm. Mary Doodles makes amazing props. Dante plays the ukulele. Like they're all super cool. Uh, but I do I follow instead of lectures I follow vlogs. So, I mean, stuff by real people, like Nice Peter's vlog, like Epic Lloyd's vlog, like Dante's vlog. Um, the Vlog Brothers, obviously, um, because Hank Green is a cutie and John Green writes good books. Um, also, Hank Green, quote, fucking loves science. <laughs> it's a good song. Science, bitches! <laughs> um, he's on tour right now, I think, uh, in the sort of western states, in a way that I will not be able to get to. Actually, no, not now, because next week is VidCon. Mm. But, uh, oh, I just dated us. I'm sorry. Mm, I'll cut it. Okay. Maybe. I won't. But, uh, yeah, Jenna Marbles, Grace Helbig, Hannah Hart. Um, I watch I watch a weird amount of Shea Carl, and I really love... It's probably because I, I met a bunch of these people at VidCon, and, like, once I meet somebody in person and I sort of find out that they're cool in person, I just want to be their biggest fan. Mm -hmm. This is how I became, like, the hugest copy Red Leader fan. I just I played a show with them and they were so amazing, not just in making their music, but in how they behave around the venue and, and to other artists and to other musicians. They taught me a lot of things without even knowing they were teaching me things. And now they're like my favorite musicians ever, um, because I just want to be everybody's biggest fan. And so as soon as I meet somebody, I'm just like, y you make stuff. I make stuff. Wow. <laughs> It's really an I want to watch your stuff. It's really an extension of how you made friends as a kid. Like, you like ice cream? I like ice yeah, cream. You like you too? I like you too. We can be best friends. Seriously. It's cool, guys. I know you have like a million subscribers. I'll. You know, it doesn't matter. What matters is we make the same thing. It's like my, my deep, insightful moment with Rebecca Black. Uh, I love <laughs> Rebecca Black. I love watching her stuff. I love the song Friday, and I love I love playing it. Acoustic. In places, I played it at Summer Lights, um, because I got this chance. It was like five minutes of VidCon. I just got the chance to talk with her, and I was like, "Yeah, everybody, everybody hates that song, and you caught a lot of flack because people hated you for it." And I, under, I feel like I understand because if people left really, really mean comments on a thing that I made, I would feel really bad for a while. <laughs> And that's not a thing that anybody should do, especially not to somebody who's 16 and has just started out. But she's just like, good, I'm still making music. Who do I care? <laughs> I'm still going. I'm like, yes, you are. That's amazing. Because, man, did a lot of people hate Friday. No. A lot. No. A lot. For really no good reason. No, no, it's there. terrible. No, it's I mean, abominable. No, not, not that. I'm talking about... It's one of those things that if nobody talked about it... It wouldn't have gotten any attention, but yeah, yeah. and that the only reason why people hated on it is just because so many people were talking. Well, about it's it. just that's just because that's how they, sometimes the internet happens to people. Yeah, and that's what happens when the internet happens to people. Yeah, but yeah, I, I I'm really fascinated. I, I met them at VidCon. Um, Jesse and Jana, the uh, they do uh, BF versus GF. They also do prank versus prank. Oh, I know who you're talking about. And yeah. I'm not a big fan of prank channels, and I'm still mm -hmm. not a big fan of prank channels. There's a lot of pranks that I I, I just I'm. I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm too empathetic or something, but it just, it bugs me. I'm like, oh my god, if I were that person, I would be so wrecked right now. Mm. How could you do that? But in their vlog channel, it, it is clear that these two have a very complex relationship. Mm -hmm. um, because they manage to be a couple and live in the same house and also continuously prank each other in hilarious ways. And... Um, but they just, they have a lot of fun, they do a bunch of challenges and tags and things like that. They, they, the nice, the great thing about vloggers is they spend a lot of time talking with their fans, um, of which I am often one. And it's neat to have that conversation in the same way that I like talking with the people who watch our videos. And, uh, the newest thing I've started watching is The Art Assignment. With, oh my god, I can't remember her name and I don't want to just say that she's John Green's wife. 
but she's stronger. Why? I feel bad. Sarah. Okay, I was gonna say. Otherwise, we're gonna put an annotation right over your head. We're totally gonna put an annotation over my head because it's her name. Because because she is awesome, and the art assignment is is something that she has started doing. And every every week, they come up with an art thing that you could do, and you could film, and you send it in, and they and they do some features for it, and things like that. And okay. you just the idea is to get more people doing art and thinking about art. And I spend a lot of time doing that and thinking about it. So it's really neat to see a lot of people who are not just making art themselves but making art accessible to other people and people who maybe don't do it often or don't do it ever or feel really self-conscious about it mm. and that way they can do a thing that's maybe weird or out of character and go oh no I'm doing it because of I'm doing it because a video on the internet told me to do it <laughs> um, but you know you take what you can get right it's it's really apparent though that you gravitate towards community and personal connection. Like it's just that's that's your bread and butter. You like you like being able to on a one way medium connecting two ways. Yep. It's it's uh, whereas me, like I said, it, the medium in which things get transmitted to me is very much one directional. Uh, not to reference the band at all, but I find that I find that as much as hashtag one direction. <laughs> As much as um, hashtag own eaters, like as, as as much as I like watching the videos and stuff, I almost never engage in the comment sections. I mean, I, I do for our channel when people are asking us questions. Um, actually, oh man, I wish I would have prepared it. I would have given a shout out to the guy who uh, I was having a conversation with about the Duke of Edinburgh with a couple videos ago. Drew. Is it Drew? I think so. All right, well, I'll give a shout-out to Drew. We're going to get him on the podcast soon, so... All right, so... But, I mean, I, I, I'll do it for our channel, but for the most part, I very rarely engage in, in the comment section. Uh, it, usually, I rage at the comment section, especially when you read a news article and the, you see the kind of things that people post, like non-trolls posting stuff. Um, but I, for the most part, go for the content. It's like sitting in a lecture. You go, you sit in a lecture, and you get it because it's something that's being transmitted to you. Um, and I like learning things. So, I mean, like another, a couple of the, the podcasts, not the video things on YouTube, but a couple of the podcasts I listen to are very much informative or discussing ideas. So Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, it's a three hour long podcast. He only puts it out every couple of months just because of the amount of research that goes into it. Mm -hmm. But that guy makes history come alive to me like i've never he was part of the inspiration why i wanted to start podcasting in the first place because he was able to through just erudition just i don't know how many books he must own or how many books he must have read but just he's able to tell the story of these things that happen historically and make you feel like you can sit down right in the middle of it and experience what it was like to live at the time all like the narration has the benefit of hindsight that we're looking back on it we can understand it but he presents it in such a way that you could not possibly have understood what was going on while you were in the middle of it mm. you know so it's it's an it's an amazing way of presenting the information and just i gravitated towards it other ones that i listen to regularly are things on the quick and dirty tips network um i started there with um the manners the quick and dirty manners series uh and i used to listen to that benefit from some of that actually yeah you send me the link to that i, I used to well, i used to listen to it on apple um and now i switched over i listen to all my stuff on stitcher no no for no particular reason i'm not against apple it's just uh the, that's the app i use on my tablet apple didn't not give us money to say that no no i just i that's when i i first started podcasts with uh through the itunes store and then now i use stitcher um but on the quick and dirty tips network i love uh the math dude Ten, he basically breaks down mathematical concepts for 10 minutes. Nice. Uh, also, Grammar Girl. Just, I feel like... Love Grammar Girl. Yeah, I just feel like uh, she just recently, and this might date us as well, but she was talking about uh, the evolution of words like a whole other, adding in that the word whole in, into this expression and what that means. Um, so I just like that it's topic-based, it's digestible, but, and you learn something from it in a short amount of time. Um, there's a... Uh, this one was from iTunes. It was a BBC documentary. It's about 10 episodes long. Uh, Marcus de Soto, de so de Soto? He's a math or professor of mathematics, and he did the history of mathematics um, where he discussed 
uh, ten key figures in mathematics and the ideas okay. that they used to revolutionize. And there's some things that he did in he, his series that I'm, I might steal the concepts just to play around with in my own podcast. Ooh. The idea of... Foreshadowing. Well, yeah. I mean, like, I might, for example, <laughs> get you to read somebody else's correspondence from that person's voice. Right? So it's just, there's a few cool ideas in there. But anyways, it's uh, the BBC... Do I have it written down? No, no, I don't have the name. But it's... It'll be in the show notes. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. Um, there's also more... Um, this would be a little bit more personal, but Brett McKay at The Art of Manliness, he's got a podcast. Most of them are all interviews now um, that complement stuff that he's posting on his website. But uh, he does uh, interviews with various authors and whatnot to discuss topics in the concept of manliness. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Steve Levitt and uh, Stephen um, Dubner from Freakonomics, they have mm -hmm. a podcast, the Freakonomics podcast, so I yeah. listen to that. Again, just... It's an interesting idea. You may not necessarily learn in the same way that somebody is lecturing at you, but they're discussing interesting or cool yeah. ideas. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. The ones I do are usually like gaming stuff, like Fear the Boot or um, Ken and Robin Talk About Stuff. But in general, I, I, I like watching stuff. It's, it's it, Thinking about it, I think you're right that I that I prefer more community-oriented stuff. Like I, I am the guy who I, I will hit the comments, even just to say, hey, I really like this. Mm. Because... I like those comments, and I like when I get them, and I think that other people like it when they get them. Um, even if they don't read them, it makes me feel good to leave them because it means I'm participating in this thing that they're doing. See, I'll do that through Twitter. I mean, it's still community because other, too. other people will see my tweets, but for the most part, I go to Twitter and tag the person specifically to send it back mm -hmm. and be like, hey, this is a really cool idea, or... Uh, at one point, um, Own Citizen was going through this kind of existential crisis because there was a, an article written about that kind of really critiqued the culture of the critics in terms of people who go and critique movies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and just He had some pretty valid things to say, but it was still kind of harsh. And Kyle seemed to, on, at least on Twitter, I got the sense that he was having a really hard time. And so I found another article, and I linked it to him saying, look, like you... I think about it. I think about the critics as, you know what? I don't have time to watch everything, but you and I have different libraries that we've read, and this is the point where you can come through and we can share our libraries, yeah. and you can share these ideas with me, and it's an edifying experience. And I sent it to him, and he retweeted it, which I took to mean that you know he he appreciated that somebody was reaching out and connecting to him. Oh, yeah. No, I love reaching out to people on Twitter too. Like it's oh. it's it's part of that community thing, but part of it is I like to fight all the negative YouTube comments. Not in the sense that I will sit there and argue with them, yeah. but just in the sense that if there's more good comments than bad comments, I feel like I've done my job. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I think that the difference in the community focus versus the lecture focus is that, at heart, you are some kind of professor, and I am a street busker. <laughs> like, my, oh, my favorite thing to do, like, like people people will do that sort of, when you, when you do a street performance, they'll do that thing where they all become passive and they become an audience. And they just sort of stand there, often with their hands in their pockets, and they stiffen up or they cross their arms. Or I only cross my arms during the podcast because it's the only way you can see my hands. <laughs> um, but, and the important thing is to remind these people that this is an interactive medium. Like you pull them out of the audience, you get you you audience involvement is essential for any kind of good show that I would do, and and that carries over often to to YouTube and, and to podcasting and things like that. It's what I love about it is the is the places like like what I love about Zay Frank is that the sports racers did all kinds of stuff together. They just last year they had a museum exhibit. Two years ago now? Two years ago they had a museum exhibit. Um, full of stuff that they built, like books and whatnot that they'd shipped around the country and stamped with stamps that they'd made. They shipped a human baton. They took a guy from New York to L I think it was New York to LA and back. Um, and he only rode with sports racers, mm -hmm. which are the names of the sort of Zay Frank, the people in the Zay Frank community. Um, and he stayed at their houses. And the only rule was, because he, he, he sent this idea to Zay Frank. He's like, I need to get here and get back, and I got no way to do it. And Zay Frank's like, cool, we're going to help this guy out. Um, he's like, you know, if, you, if you're up for it, you, well, we set up a thing in the forums. You can sign up, but if you're not up for it, no worries, whatever. The only rule is, you have to give him a button. And so he got to L.A. and he like he's taking you know the guy's taking pictures along the route and he's got all these new buttons patched all over his jacket and he, by the time he got back to New York it was just covered in these 
pieces of people that they left with him because they were part of this community and that to me is amazing <laughs> and that is what I love about it and it's the same it's the same thing with street performing like that you always there's a point where you just have to yell at people like this isn't TV I can see you <laughs> and in even in a space like YouTube this isn't TV I can still see you I mean I can see you through your comments I can see you through your tweets I can see you in part through my analytics but I know you're there, and I'm not just here for me. I'm here for you. Let's do a thing together. Like that's what I want to do, and that's what I love. Like most of the most of the people I follow, that's the kind of way that they do things, and I love doing it that way. I mean, Rooster Teeth wouldn't be Rooster Teeth. I mean, they have a lot a lot of incredible people working there, but they wouldn't be Rooster Teeth without the Rooster Teeth community behind them. I mean, same with Loading Ready Run. Same with the Vlog Brothers, same with Jenna Marbles or the Epic Rap Battles of History or any, like, they would still be incredible. But one of the things that makes it possible for them to do all the things that they do are the communities that surround them. Mm -hmm. Oh man, but that I think is pretty much all my favorite stuff. Yeah, I've only got one more that I want to mention. All right, you uh, get the closing word. All right, I'll get the closing word. So the last person that um, I... I Try to, I try to take in all of his content. Uh, I discovered him randomly through The Escapist. Uh, originally, I started going to The Escapist for Zero Punctuation. I still watch Zero Punctuation. Because it's awesome. But yeah, Yahtzee, Yahtzee puts out some great videos. Uh, but I, I accidentally stumbled across this guy named Bob Chipman, the movie guy, and or movie Bob. And I realized that he puts out a lot of content per week. Maybe when I first started watching him, he didn't have quite as much content, but now he puts out, at the very least, two video series a week, and at least three articles on any given week, plus he participates in The Escapist's podcast, which they release every Monday, I believe. Mm -hmm. So he has two main programs, um, Escape to the Movies, and The Big Picture. And The Big Picture, I think I enjoy more, because I love the big picture. That's, that's where he does a, like a thesis topic, and he discusses something related to pop culture but i still watch escape to the movies because it's movie reviews and i trust his opinion i i it's I, I agree with his opinion for the most part but i also trust what he says and when he says it he usually backs up the reasons why he's saying something mm -hmm. um but he also releases a bunch of um short articles like com comparable to what you release like it's they're yeah. not too lengthy maybe three pages max but they're the pages are fairly short uh, so he does things like intermission, uh, HD, and he's got another one that the name of it escapes. So oh, I just I see what you did there. Escapes, oh yeah, that that, that, was, that was a complete inadvertent pun. But of course. Uh, but I find, I I really look up to. So I respect his opinion. Uh, I I think that he knows what he's talking about. He's been in the business for some time. Um, and then I also really respect just the amount of content he's putting out because there are some people. Who will put out a vlog a day that they just film on their phone right like it's nothing like it i mean it's not nothing but it's it's just one of those things that okay i want to talk about this thing for five minutes and they hold up their phone for you know five to ten minutes where they talk to it and then they just close it out right and then it, you just upload it there's no real editing nothing to it right it's really really simple way to connect with your community but the amount of time it takes and perhaps some research that goes into what he does i really respect what he's putting out there uh, and in addition to Dan Carlin, I, I would also say that Bob Chipman probably was a little bit of the impetus that made me want to do the vlogging initially with you, or vlogging, the, the podcasting with you. Uh, and then uh, I want to put out my own podcast, which I've slowly started. One day we'll on. get you into vlogging with your phone. <laughs> well, no, I, like, need a, like, I need a better phone. You look at, for you look at, you look at well, I mean, you look at guys like Shay Carl, mm -hmm. who is a daily vlogger. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, that's mostly what he does. He's, and, he, and he is astounded by it he, he mentioned and i can't i wouldn't be able to find the video i've watched so many of them but he's like i am amazed by the fact that i am able to make a living by staring at a camera and talking about my family mm. for 10 minutes a day mm. and the rest of the time like all i have to do is be me and that is incredible and i i i met a bunch of daily vloggers a, Everybody from like, like, like ranging from ages like sixteen to you know thirty five at, at VidCon last year, and they having done daily vlogging for for Vita twice now, mm -hmm. 
it's a lot of work. Yeah, no, I didn't mean to diminish the work and effort it goes into. It's just for uh, from watching uh, Bob's. Well, no, but movie Bob does a lot of research. It's, it's yeah. a different. It's a very different animal. Yeah. Well, and it it, it does. It comes down to uh, again, like I like the editorial, intellectual, academic exercises. I like um, things blowing up. <laughs> I, I guess maybe it is. Maybe I do. I should be a, a lecturer or a teacher or something. The Socratic method would work very fine with me. But actually, uh, my uh, my one roommate, her father, randomly remarked to her, like, Ryan, you, he was probably a monk in a previous life because he's so calm and centered and he thinks a lot. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm an atheist now, but... Okay, I'll take it. That's yeah. a, that's a yeah, very that, that's, that's a, a compliment. That's a really good compliment. Considering this, the, he's an engineer. I look up to him for his like experience and whatnot. You know, the fact that he thinks that I got my shit together, Fair and enough. that he thinks that I'm a smart guy. Ryan I, definitely I, has his shit together. Okay. That is our moral lesson of today. All right, yeah, so, I'll take it. I'm the one who's wearing the tie, I suppose. But. Yep, I'm wearing a Doctor Who T-shirt. So anyway, I'm Jim and I'm Ryan, and we are gonna sign off. Stay awesome. Bang bang gorilla